Greenhouse warming theory is rapidly becoming the most expensive mistake ever made in the history of science. Video 7. Greenhouse warming theory has never been verified by experiment. In 1859, John Tyndall, a prominent Irish physicist, demonstrated in the laboratory that carbon dioxide gas absorbs some infrared energy radiated by Earth. Tyndall and most physicists and climate scientists since have assumed that if a gas absorbs thermal radiation, it must get hotter. This fundamental assumption forms the foundation upon which greenhouse warming theory is built. While it sounds rather obvious, this assumption has never been verified by experiment, a cornerstone of the scientific method, and does not appear to be correct. In 1895, Svante Arrhenius set out to determine if Earth's surface temperatures could be influenced by the presence of heat-absorbing gases in the atmosphere. After hearing several talks and engaging in heated discussions about the possible causes of ice ages and of geologic estimates of the carbon cycle, he wondered whether having the concentration of carbon dioxide in air might explain cooling of approximately 5 degrees Celsius during ice ages. Arrhenius acknowledged that one should, strictly speaking, arrange experiments to measure the effect but concluded that such experiments would require very expensive apparatus beyond that at his disposal. While such equipment would not have been all that expensive, the real issue was that Arrhenius was a physical chemist who relied on the laboratory work of spectral physicists. So he embarked on what became a year of very intense effort, trying to devise a rational way mathematically to calculate how having carbon dioxide concentrations could lower world temperatures 4 to 5 degrees. The empirical basis for his model was limited, so that he had to make a whole lot of seemingly reasonable assumptions in order to have the numbers work out to the values that he wanted to calculate. Arrhenius published his estimates in 1896. That paper forms the foundation of greenhouse warming theory. Arrhenius relied in part on measurements by Knut Angstrom, a spectral physicist who participated in most of the same discussions of carbon dioxide and ice ages. In 1900, Angstrom published two experiments concluding that no more than about 16% of Earth's radiation can be absorbed by atmospheric carbon dioxide. And secondly, that the total absorption is very little dependent on changes in the atmospheric carbon dioxide content as long as it is not smaller than two-tenths of the existing value. Angstrom convinced most physicists in 1900 that greenhouse warming theory was not correct, yet his work has been summarily dismissed ever since by climate scientists. Angstrom was the last physicist that I can find in the literature to seriously question the basic physical assumptions underlying greenhouse warming theory. We now understand in considerable detail that a molecule of carbon dioxide absorbs less than 16% of the frequencies that make up infrared energy radiated by Earth. The frequencies and amplitudes radiated by Earth are shown by green in this figure. The few frequencies absorbed by a molecule of carbon dioxide are shown as black vertical lines. If these limited number of frequencies were re-radiated perfectly and absorbed by another body of matter, they could not warm that body even to the temperature of Earth. These frequencies are only the resonant frequencies of the bonds holding the molecule together. Thus, the thermal energy is absorbed into the bonds, increasing the bond energy that holds the molecules together, and this does not increase the temperature of a gas. The temperature of a gas is well known to be proportional to the kinetic energy of the gas, which is proportional to the square of the average velocity that all gas molecules are traveling. In 2017, I carried out an experiment showing that air containing more than 23 times the normal concentration of carbon dioxide was not heated any more than air with normal concentration of carbon dioxide. In both cases, each volume of air was absorbing infrared radiation from a black cast iron pot full of water with a temperature slightly warmer than Earth. Since 2015, I have been offering to pay $10,000 for my children's inheritance to the first person who can demonstrate by experiment that warming observed since 1970 could be physically explained by the observed increase in carbon dioxide. No one has shown any interest. 
Many experiments described on YouTube claim to show heating associated with increasing concentrations of carbon dioxide gas, such as this one by Bill Nye the Science Guy. These experiments typically use heat lamps that are approximately 10 times hotter than Earth. From Planck's law, we can see that these heat lamps are radiating frequencies and amplitudes of oscillation that are much higher than anything radiated by Earth. These experiments are simply not relevant to greenhouse warming theory. To this very day, no one has ever shown by experiment that greenhouse warming theory is physically possible. There are numerous studies that have inferred that doubling the concentration of carbon dioxide would cause a warming of air by 1.5 to 4.5 degrees Celsius. These studies, however, assume that all observed global warming was caused by observed changes in carbon dioxide concentrations. I showed in video three that ozone depletion appears to be the major cause of warming from 1975 to 1998. Major warming of air is clearly observed in the stratosphere five to 30 miles above Earth, where oxygen molecules absorbing ultraviolet C radiation from sun are dissociated breaking the bond apart that holds the two atoms of oxygen together into one molecule of oxygen. Dissociation causes the two atoms of oxygen to fly apart at high velocities, instantaneously converting all bond energy to kinetic energy that increases air temperature. Infrared radiation, on the other hand, does not have enough energy to cause dissociation. It is this dissociation of carbon dioxide molecules by solar ultraviolet radiation that appears to cause the atmosphere of Venus containing 96% carbon dioxide to have a very hot temperature of 467 degrees Celsius. It is the stratosphere of Earth that keeps Earth more than 33 degrees warmer than expected, not carbon dioxide as proposed by Arrhenius in 1908. There is now considerable evidence that greenhouse warming theory is not even physically possible, as explained in detail at physically-impossible.com and in video 10. In brief, no body of matter can be warmed by absorbing its own radiation. If that were possible, bodies under the right conditions could spontaneously heat up. We all know that spontaneous heating cannot physically happen. Second, placing a blanket over a body of matter slows the rate of cooling, but cannot physically cause the body to get a higher temperature. Thirdly, the temperature of a body of matter is determined by the temperature of the source of the radiation being absorbed, not by the rate of loss of heat by the matter. This is a little harder to understand, but is explained in detail at physically-impossible.com and in less detail in the next video. Thank you.